Call the Finance Committee meeting to order today, July 14, 2022. Miss Cindy, may I roll call? Ms. Richards? Mr. Toller? Here. Ms. Dominguez? Present. Mr. Westmoreland? Present. So I have a quorum, so we'll start out with discussing the accounts payable check register for May 16, 2022 to June 15. 2022 in the amount of $19,025,400.72. You don't look like Mr. Snellbach. Thank goodness. Yes. But I'm sure he wish he'd be here than where he's at, so. Anyone have any questions on no, the? It was self-explanatory. All right. Well, we'll move on to B. Discuss the year-to-date budget to actual comparison schedule for April 2022. This also doesn't uh, require any action. It's a document. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, um, it's required that we give y'all reports monthly and said this is that report. It is for April, but there is no action needed. All right. Any of the members have any questions? Not, we'll move on to C. Consider approval of the 2022-23 travel rates. I mean, but what agenda is it for? Okay, we do need uh, action on this because okay. uh, we're recommending the changes that are in that uh, highlighted column. It would be taking the mileage from 56 cents a mile to 62.5, and based on what the state is using, that's what we use every year. And then there were a few changes to mills further on down on the schedule. Okay. I'll make a motion to accept the recommendation on these travel plans, travel. Travel rates. Yep. Mayor, a second. Second. Any discussion? Call for a vote. Voting is open. Yes for me, but I'm not seeing it pop up yet. Make sure. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on to D, consider approval of a renewal for the 2022 student accident insurance. Looks like we might have some good news. Carmel was not able to be here this evening, and uh, she has recommended that we go with U.S. Fire Insurance Company. That is with Powell and Associates. There would be a $23,691 savings. The premium for this year uh, would be $74,900. Do I hear a motion? But what was the last statement? I couldn't hear you. The premium, $74,000. <coughs> how, much, how much less? $23,691. Okay. Yes, yeah, it's a 20, right at $24,000 savings. Mm -hmm. Last year. Okay, I'll make a motion to accept the recommendations. Uh, yeah, I'll second it, but I do have a question. Go ahead. And I know Ms. K is probably not the person to ask this to, but we need to find out from our uh, broker. I'd like to know what the coverage is on these policies because last year we had several complaints from parents that had students get injured during football games, and then they found out the insurance was was next to worthless as far as it didn't pay whatever everybody assumes that if you get hurt <coughs> one of our ball games that this insurance kicks in but that's not the way this insurance is it's kind of like a little kicker with your additional mr jinko i don't know if you know anything about it or i, I know the, the the way i understand it is that this insurance would is the primary insurance whatever this insurance would not pay the parent or guardian insurance would kick in to pay the rest that, that's the way I understand it. Right, but I'd like to get some clarification on what it is, on what it is that they pay because it, it has a very small cap. You know, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say it was less than a thousand dollar cap for an ER visit, which we all know that if you go to an ER, it's going to be exceptionally higher than that. And this, and, this says up to five thousand, so I don't know. Yeah. On the 
page one, the inpatient, and they have the outpatient. So what is it for an ER visit? We'll get a more comprehensive explanation. Yeah, I, I would like that. Just, I don't know that we have a lot of options moving forward. Yeah. I don't think there's a lot of writers out there that write this type of policies, but I would like to publicly say what this coverage is from the beginning so that whenever we do get hit with these questions later, that we have a good answer for them. Because a lot of people purchase this thinking it's a blanket policy that covers an injury at school. Maybe we can get something from Mr. Powell or yeah. something that yeah, clarifies so. that. I was going to say that, you know, a couple things. One, we may be able to get Mr. Powell to come and do, uh, put it on the agenda for um, uh, either July or August probably July meeting to just do a brief presentation right but they also I think we could also present um, a flyer to parents when we send this home yes it kind of gives a rundown or overview I think not, the, very good cause not all the all the details but like a you know big page. picture Real yeah page. one pager yes and just to just to just to educate the parents that are purchasing for their students yeah. what are they buying all right, any further discussion? Not a call for a vote. Voting is open. Yes. Voting is closed. Motion passes unanimously. Final item E, discuss the proposed 2022-2023 annual operating budgets. made a few notes uh, from the summary that I emailed to y'all and also based on the budget document that was added to the uh, board docs this afternoon. Um, the timeline for our board approval is that um, on July the 19th we need for y'all to uh, approve us publishing the budget, that it's available for public inspection and that there will be a public hearing on August the 23rd. Tonight, there's no action that's required. It's just to discuss it and answer questions that y'all may have. So I thought I would begin with page one. If you're looking at the big budget book, you have it available in front of you? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. The true page one, not the Roman numeral, but the true page one. That is the general fund budget summary. And the first thing I want to point out is that the bottom line for the general fund at ending in 22-23 is that we would end up with excess revenues of $5.4 million, or sometimes it's referred to as a net change in fund balance, which in this case, this change is uh, to the good. It's not to the bad. We are ahead. So that's about $1.3 million above the 21-22 revised budget amount. The estimated ending fund balance will be $27,373,274 and that is composed of $10.5 million for disasters and the other post-employment benefit insurances and $16.8 million is uh, unreserved. We always look to see how our fund balance compares to a year's worth of total expenditures and for 22-23, at the end of the year, we would have 15.29% fund balance compared to total expenditures. Okay. Okay, so now I'd like to move to the assumptions for the uh, general fund, and you can find those on Roman numeral pages seven and eight. The first thing is that we have budgeted that the MFP will increase by $3.6 million, and that's mainly due to a per pupil amount increase. It's not an increase in enrollment, but it's the per pupil amount from the state that increased. We're estimating an increase in sales tax of 3%, which is about $1.4 million for the general fund. We estimate that the salary study increases will cost about $2.9 million, and that is included in the budget. 
state raises are not included in the budget. And the reason we didn't is because we started on the budget book early in the spring and it wasn't guaranteed that the state was gonna approve it until sometime in June. So we'll just add that in to the revised budgets. Okay. But it doesn't affect the bottom line. We also didn't budget for the revenue. So when we do the budget revisions, we'll be increasing the salaries and increasing the revenue. So no effect on the bottom line. We have estimated $1.8 million is needed to cover salaries and benefits for step increases. We did not budget for any supplemental pays. And as you know, last year, uh, the general fund didn't have any supplemental pays except for the part that Besser couldn't cover. Yeah, and it may have been a couple of hundred thousand dollars, but that's not in this year's budget. So speaking of salaries and benefits, they make up 80%, 88% of the general fund total expenditures of $157 million. We have included an estimated increase in health insurance of $600,000, which was derived by assuming, thinking that the Office of Group Benefits would increase health insurance by 5% in January. The teacher's retirement and school employees rates decreased for 22-23. So we budget for a decrease of 400 and something thousand dollars for those. Uh, we also included the $450,000 transfer from the general fund to the Hammond Magnet program. Other magnet school programs are budgeted at $717,000. Beginning on Roman numeral page 16, well, 15 and 16, we have a chart summarizing the cost of supplies, equipment, and other expenditures. They make up $17.2 million of the budget. And just so you know that the types of expenditures that are included in this category, it would include school allotments, the cost of electricity, gasoline, textbooks, Drivers owned buses, lease payments, lease payments to Kent Mitchell, financing cost of bus leases, to name a few. Purchase professional services make up $4.3 million. The types of expenditures in this category are purchase educational services. That would be your contracted training services. Legal substitute services provided by ESS, fingerprinting, etc. And a good note is we can say that 81% of the general fund dollars is directed to instructional purposes that's far in the classroom. So now I'd like to move on to the special revenue fund section. The re remainder of my discussion will go fairly quickly so you don't have to listen to me talk. <laughs> all evening. You're doing a great but, job, um, Kay. Great job. <laughs> on the uh, special revenue funds, um, some of their assumptions <coughs> are listed on Roman numeral page 8. But I will uh, point out that the biggest part of the uh, special revenue fund increase this year is due to $81 million in ESSER funds. One of those that's included in this budget is for $54 million. And you think, well, are we going to spend $54 million in 22-23? Well, we don't really know what the federal government may come up with that says, well, you can use it for this now instead of what we thought originally. But temporarily, until we do the revised budget, we've budgeted for all of it to be spent. That a grant actually ends in 23-24. Some of the things that the ESSER funds are budgeted to pay for are 40 new buses, purchase and installation of new HVAC systems, playground equipment, virtual instruction in the form of curriculum, devices, software, technical support, tutoring services, after school programs, summer learning camp, and sanitation supplies.
for the debt service fund, we're not required to have a budget for them, but we always do. The budget law is only for the general fund and the special revenue funds. But for the debt service fund, we have budgeted $1 million for the interest payment on O.W. Dillon's quality school construction bonds. And those bonds will be paid off in 25-26. $750,000 has been budgeted for phase one construction interest payments in 22-23. No millages were levied levied for Sumner and Independence Districts as the money was set aside from the remaining um, pay-as-you-go, owed pay-as-you-go funds. Mm -hmm. Sumner's final payment will be made in 22-23 and Independence's final payment will be made in 23-24. The Capital Projects Funds is listed on Roman numeral 9. Um, <laughs> we have budgeted $3 million more in second one cent sales tax for upcoming projects not included in phase one construction. Phase one projects will continue into 22-23 along with four new projects, which are eight classroom additions at D.C. Reeves, the Roger High School Field House, eight classroom additions at Ponchatoula High School, and 10 classroom additions at Champ Cooper. So uh, that ends the summary that I had prepared for you. But if you have any questions now or later on, I will be glad to receive them and look up specifics for you. Ms. Kay, I appreciate it. I told you this personally a while ago and I'll tell it publicly. I appreciate the work that your department has put into this. It's, uh, it's very well put together. It's professional. It's above my pay grade, obviously. Uh, but I appreciate the transparency and the fact that you've reached out to us and asked us for questions and uh, are willing to try to walk us through that. So I applaud your work. Yep. Well, thank you very much. We do try hard. And I want to mention uh, some people that I couldn't do this without. Jay Coxon, Scott Stulig, and Bridget Munch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, and <laughs> All right. With no action is needed. Thank you. All right, but we do need for you to approve at the board meeting for us to publish it. It'll be published the day after the board meeting, and the, the public will know that it's available for inspection. And um, so, like I said, if you have any questions later on, feel free to contact me. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Nothing thank else you. to come before the meeting. The meeting for finances adjourned.